основна мішень терористів енергетика. The main target of terrorists is energy. Therefore, please be even more careful than before about the need to consciously consume electricity. We are trying to bring back lights to people as soon as possible. I'm joined now by retired Air Vice Marshal Sean Bell, who's been looking uh, in detail at the situation on the ground. Sean, great to see you as always. Let, let's touch on these uh, attacks on energy facilities, other infrastructure facilities uh, of the Ukrainians. Is this picking up pace? It's been spread out over the last week or so. Yeah, the Russian focus for the last two weeks has been energy infrastructure. It seems to be um, tailing off a little bit. But last night there were another two major attacks uh, down to the south of uh, Kyiv. Um, and there's been more attacks in context, more attacks in the last two weeks than there have been in the previous eight months of the war, which just demonstrates the current Russian focus. Um, to be clear, these are not military targets. It does not help further Putin's military war aim. It's all about terrorising the local population. Um, and it does appear to be as much Putin just lashing out, doing what he can, given that he's not performing very well, his forces are not performing very well on the battlefields themselves. Uh, let's touch on Kherson and, uh, of course, the area where Russia's ordered an evacuation. What's, what's the latest on that, Russia? Uh, the Ukrainian counterattack. Yeah, the um, Kherson, we've got uh, reports of the Russian military heavy equipment now being moved across the Dnipro River. We'd expect that normally to be a precursor for the actual withdrawal of the Russian forces themselves. They'll be particularly vulnerable as they cross the Dnipro River, and therefore we can fully expect to see Russia do some sort of distraction, something else to distract their, their forces away. The crossing points, the main crossing points of the Dnipro River, um, the Klakovka Dam, which is still standing, so that one's still standing, and then the Antovsky bridge, which, if you recall, was taken out by the Ukrainians very early in the war to try and isolate the Russian forces. The Russians have been building pontoon bridges next to that to try to get across. The Ukrainians have been targeting them, then they rebuild them again. They, they are standing at the moment, and we're fully expecting that, um, those, that they'll be critical crossing points. The challenge, I think, here is that there's also concerns that the Russians have mined the dam up here, and if they blow that, it not only flood the Dnipro River, take out Kherson, very unlikely they'd do that before their withdrawal, because obviously that would trap them, but it would actually mask and cover their withdrawal and stop their retreat becoming a rout. As we discussed the other day, the trouble is with that, if you, if you flood that area, you not only cause devastating consequences for the southern part of Ukraine with fresh water, but also that's where the cooling water comes from, the Zaporizhia nuclear facility. Mm -hmm. And so that's all obviously in, in the south. Take us to, to the east and what fighting's going on there? Yeah, we've largely been focused a lot on Kherson, and I think it's worth uh, pointing out that up in uh, the Donbass, well, one area where the Russians are still trying to push forward is in the Donbass, in the Donetsk region itself, uh, down the south here. Um, and, the, and the real question for me is why? If you remember the Russians, the Putin always had this special military operation. He talked about the Donbass and the um, Crimea as being his two focal points. Well, he's taken uh, Luhansk. He hasn't yet taken Donetsk, so fighting there. And more recently, although he's lost a lot of ground outside Luhansk, he hasn't lost the ground here. And the most recent reports are the Wagner Group, that mercenary group, are busy doing some massive, great entrenching work here, building the defensive line all around Kremina. And that's anti-tank traps and trenches. All the actions that you wouldn't expect a, a, a Russian military force that's on the offence to be doing that. This is very, very defensive. And it does appear to be consolidating the gains made here, making sure they repel any further Ukrainian attacks and preparing for the winter pause. Sean Bell, as always, thanks so much.